Hi yogis! Today we'll be doing a pincha focus practice. If you're not familiar, it's a forearm stand. And what we'll be doing is drills to cover, strengthen, and work on the flexibility of our shoulders and our bodies to prepare us to get that pincha, or if you already have your pincha, to strengthen it and to further your practice in it. Hope you enjoy. Let's get started. Okay, let's start. So we're gonna start in the child's pose. We'll do our grounding and meditative work in that child's pose. So you can just come to the ground. Hands will be forward so we can start with that juicy shoulder stretch that we need for our forearm stand practice. Forehead to the ground, breathing deeply. Starting to go inwards in your inward journey of your meditative practice. What does that mean? All that mumbo jumbo it just means to shun out all the outer world. Go deep into your mind, into your subconsciousness. And breathe deeply there, trying as much as possible to just be in this still and peaceful and silent place. If you feel your mind starting to wander, always return to your breath. Thinking about your breath, deepening your breath, really anything that has to do with the breath to help you ground in this moment, feel stable and peaceful in your energy. If you're starting to feel comfortable, you can start to widen the legs and go deeper in between them and stretch the fingers a little bit more forward to go a little bit deeper into this child's pose stretch, but you don't have to. Always listening to the body. It's gonna be a more advanced focus class today. So always listening to your body. If you ever need to take a child's pose, do so. It's your practice, you do what feels best to you. Keeping that in mind, it's still going to be a playful practice and I want you to really try. Try not to take the child's pose, but if your body needs it, then listen to it. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. Feeling your belly fill up and empty out in between your legs. Preserving this peaceful meditative energy now and throughout your whole practice and hopefully the rest of your day. Even when things get hard, you always want to return to this space inside, finding peace and stillness within yourself, even when the environment and things around you don't really match that energy. Let's slowly start to walk our hands back to our legs. Take a deep breath and start to sit up onto your heels. In Vajrasana, Thunderbolt Pose, you can close the legs together. Sitting on your heels now. Taking a moment with eyes closed just to let the circulation flow from your head to your feet. And we'll start circling the head, releasing any tension from the neck. Be mindful that when you practice a pincha or forearm stand practice, that the neck will get strained afterward, but it's more of just like your muscle was working and now it's kind of sore. The same way if you do squats, your glutes are gonna hurt. So when you're doing forearm stand, you have to look in between your hands. And in the beginning, your neck is gonna hurt a bit afterwards because you were looking forward for a while, whereas normally we're working down and closing our body. So it's kind of weird for our body to all of a sudden open. So just be mindful of that, okay? That's why we're warming up the neck here. Change direction. If this seat starts to get comfortable, you can take any other seat you want. 
or stay in it, whatever feels called to you. And slowly come back to center. Inhale, the hands will come up. Exhale, place them on your shoulders, your fingertips. And we'll start circling the elbows, really feeling that whole rotating movement in the shoulder joint. Connecting this movement to your breath. Making big grand circles. Try not to keep it real small, doing really big circles. And then change direction. Inhale, the hands will come up. And we're gonna start pumping the fingers. Now when we do this, it's crucial that you open the fingers as much as possible and close them as much as possible and do this as fast as you can to really get that circulation flowing and those muscles activated in your forearms. Already you should feel warm here just from doing it for a second. Focus, keep going, keep going. A little bit longer. And slowly release. Your arms should feel like feathers after that. Now I want you to grab a strap. Either if you have a strap, a belt, a scarf, a t-shirt, a big long sock, the longer it is, the easier it will be for you. The shorter it is, the harder it will be for you. Okay, so grab whatever you have in sight and we'll get into flossing. All right. When we're flossing, our hands will just come forward and backwards. And I want you to try to keep your hands as straight as possible without bending in the elbows. Getting a little bit deeper here into the rotation of our shoulder, flexibility of our shoulders. Breathing deeply. Be mindful as well. What's going on in your shoulders? Do you feel like one is controlling the movement? One feels more powerful, more stable, more flexible? So do a little bit more on the other side. If you feel that they're nice and balanced, keep going with the balance, or maybe you wanna try activating just the left and just the right, just playing around here, but always finding a balance. So make sure you're just not doing one side the entire time. If you feel nice and warm and it feels comfortable and you're like, this is easy, well, you can slide the hands closer to each other and make it a little bit harder on yourself, but you don't have to. <laughs> little bit more. And slowly release the strap. Inhale, the hands come all the way up. Exhale, let's side bend towards the right. Inhale up. Exhale, side bend to the left. Already here, your shoulders should be like, what's going on? Inhale up. Exhale, twist towards the right. Inhale up. Twist towards the left. Let's do one more shoulder warm up here in our Vajrasana seat. I'd like you to grab a weight. Any weight, if it's a water bottle, if it's just a heavy book, anything that doesn't weigh air. <laughs> when you're ready, you'll come back to your seat and you'll lift the weight up. From here, you'll start to slowly allow the hands to move backwards. Already here, working on that shoulder extension, shoulder flexibility that we need in that forearm stand. 
When we're in a perfect forearm stand, we want our shoulders to be so open that we can go beyond them and still feel balanced and strong. Using your breath, if you feel comfortable, slowly and slowly letting the weight take over, going deeper into this extension of the arms and the shoulders. Still make sure that you feel grounded on your sit bones and you don't feel like you're leaning too far forward. You still wanna feel grounded in your seat, stable in your core, stable in your posture. Let's take one more deep breath. And then we'll slowly remove the weight and place it to the side. And we'll come to a regular seat. We'll do some seaweed legs just to activate our core. What are seaweed legs? You're going to kind of lean back onto your hands, and it doesn't matter if your fingers are forward or back, whatever feels more comfortable for you. I have my fingers backwards and fingers facing away from me. We're going to go to seaweed legs. What are seaweed legs? You're just going to lift your legs off the ground and sway them side to side. Now I want you to make sure that you're not just moving the knees together, that they're really kind of delaying one after the other, activating in the core, warming up those hip joints at the same time. It's better that the hips are really warm before inversion so that if you lift one leg, it doesn't feel so tight and maybe you're able to lean into the posture more easily later. And change direction. Let's cross right leg over left and slowly come to a seat, preparing for cow face pose. Now, if this isn't accessible to you, you can keep that right leg um, up where the knees aren't connected or you can also straighten that left leg underneath to feel more stable in your seat. Three variations. We're gonna inhale the hands all the way up. Exhale, bend the right arm matching the top leg, grabbing it with the left hand. While you're here, I want you to slowly walk the fingers down your spine of your right hand. And if it feels called to you, You'll lower the left and grab the hands together to find cow face pose. A really beautiful stretch for both shoulders. If you feel like your hands aren't connecting, that's okay. You can grab that strap or a scarf, whatever you used before, and hold that. And then with time, walking the fingers slowly towards each other. Or if you're wearing a shirt, you can do the same thing. Grab the shirt, walk the fingers towards each other. Obviously, I'm not saying it'll happen today. But with your practice, with your breath, every time will get easier and easier and more flexible and more comfortable. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then slowly release the hands. And let's change sides. Left leg over right. Finding your seat with any variation that you want, leg up, right leg straight, or both legs stacked, seeing that the knees are stacked on top of each other. Inhale, the hands come up, bend in the left elbow and grab that left elbow with your right hand. Again, walking the fingers down your spine. And if it feels called to you, dropping the right hand, grabbing fingers, Make sure that you're not too curled in, your spine is still tall, your heart is still radiating forward. Again, using a prop if you need to. Breathing deeply. Let's take one more deep breath. And then slowly release and we'll meet each other in a tabletop. Hands beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips, activating in that core so you're not sinking completely, pressing into your fingertips and to the palms of your hand. This is already crucial for a forearm stand. So really pay attention to what's happening in your hands here. 
if you feel like the weight is playing outwards to your outside of your wrist and outside of your palm, move the weight more towards the center. From here, we'll just start circling on the hands, warming up those wrist joints. Breathing deeply, connecting your breath to your movement. And change direction. center. We'll go into some cat cows. Inhale, look up, drop the belly. Exhale, press against the ground, rolling the spine towards the sky, connecting chin to chest. Continue at your own pace. Being mindful of what's going on in your spine here. Warming up the spine for more deep and advanced postures that we'll go into soon. So you want your spine and your back to be super warm. Every time you lift and every time you lower, going a bit deeper and a bit deeper. And then we'll come back to center. We'll go into some shoulder shrugs. Activating some isolated shoulder strength. What does that mean? We're just going to sink our chest in between our shoulders and push off of the ground, lifting our shoulders away from the ground, lifting our upper back. So it's really an isolated movement here of the shoulders. If you've never done this before, you can look for a second over here. If you have, get into it. The legs and the arms are really staying straight and strong in their position. Isolating this shoulder movement. Instantly your shoulders should feel really warm from this, really active. Keep going. Breathing deeply, focusing. And then coming back to center, let's give our hands and our shoulder a little rest before we continue. Inhale, left hand up towards the sky. Exhale, drop it underneath your right body for thread the needle. You can keep the right hand on the ground or bring it all the way behind your back, maybe grabbing inner left thigh. Just taking a moment to let those arms rest. Every breath you take, sinking a little bit more weight into that left shoulder. Going deep into the muscles there to relax, to release any tension, create more circulation. Let's take one more deep breath. And slowly coming back to center. Just taking a moment to feel any differences you feel in the sides of your body, upper body. And slowly moving to the next side. Inhale, right left hand up. Exhale, slide it underneath your left body. Slowly grounding into that shoulder. Left hand can stay grounded or come behind your back, maybe grabbing inner right thigh. Deep breaths. And slowly coming back to center. Lifting up into downward facing dog. Hands as wide as your shoulders, legs as wide as your hips, moving weight back towards your heels. Finding length in your spine, feel free to take any movement that feels called to you, and then slowly finding your static downward facing dog. 
Externally rotating the shoulders, pushing off your hands, already here, here, feeling active in the arms and the shoulders as well. One more deep breath. And then we'll walk our hands to our feet, to the back of the mat. And we'll grab hands behind our back to find a forward fold with a shoulder stretch. And now we're gonna do a really fun, silly move that's really great for the shoulders, for our balance, for our core, our stability. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna start walking forward all the way to your top of the mat. And then walking backwards. Keep going, I'll tell you when to stop. <laughs> Should feel like a little waddling penguin with great shoulder flexibility, great stability in your stance and in your movement. A little bit more. And let's all stop at the top of our mat. Lower down the hands. And just dangle in your forward fold for a moment, just releasing any stale, tense energy. And rolling up to standing, vertebra by vertebra. Close the eyes in Tadasana Mountain Pose. Take three deep breaths, allowing the circulation to flow from your head to your legs again. Feeling stable and balanced on your feet, like a strong mountain. And then we'll close the legs together. And we'll inhale, the hands will come up, interlace the fingers, and create pistol fingers like this where the index finger is coming out. You can all see. Like, woo, 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 woo. Yes. Legs together, hands are up in pistol fingers. From here, you're gonna start arching your back just like we did on the ground in that seat. Arm extension, shoulder extension. Breathing deeply. Every breath you take, maybe going a little bit deeper. You can feel free to keep the head neutral or look up towards the sky. When you get to your farthest point where you can breathe naturally and softly, we'll start bending the legs, almost like you're coming up to your tippy toes, one at a time. Little bit longer. And let's take a forward fold, exhale. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, walk or jump, chaturanga. Exhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Did I say exhale, up dog? <laughs> Taking a couple deep breaths here to ground. We're gonna go into a dynamic movement. I'll do it once if you wanna watch, just to get it down, and then we'll do it together twice. Okay, we're gonna inhale, the right leg comes up. Exhale, drop it back and find wild thing. Inhale, back up. Exhale, drop the elbows into one-legged dolphin and a mini dolphin push-up. Inhale, back up. Exhale, down. Ready? Let's go together on the left leg. Coming into down dog. Inhale, one-legged dog with the left leg in the sky. 
Exhale, bring it all the way back for wild thing. Inhale, back to center. One legged dog. Hold the breath as you lower down to one legged like dolphin. Exhale, mini push up. Inhale, back up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Right leg. Inhale up. Exhale, wild thing. Inhale, one legged like dog. Exhale, one legged dolphin push up. Inhale, back up. Exhale, lower the foot. Are you good? I think we'll stop here. <laughs> From here, we'll just come to dolphin. Lowering the elbows to the floor. Here, it is already crucial to keep your elbows and wrists in line. It's okay in the beginning when your wrists want to come towards the center because we're so used to closing our bodies that the hands will just slide and slide and slide. Using your power, using your energy, keep them open. If you have a book or a block, you can use that already here, either in between an L shape between your thumb and your index or between your elbows. Okay, couple options. Find your dolphin and hold it. Proud of whoever was holding it this whole time. Pushing the weight back towards your heels, just like in downward facing dog. Grounding into your fingertips, grounding into your forearms. Looking in between your palms, you can look back if you want to relax in the neck. But if you're already trying to prep for a pinch of forearm stand, look between your thumbs. Let's slowly come back up to downward facing dog. Inhale, the right leg comes all the way up. Exhale, let's bring it all the way through our hands. And inhale for high lunge. Giving our hands a little breather here. Activating the legs, which are just as important in an inversion to have strong legs and a strong core. So here we're in our high lunge. The heel is lifted, hips are aligned, tucked tailbone protecting the lower back. In the front leg, the knees above the heel. Toes are facing forward. Make sure that knees are collapsing inward. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, cactus hands. In our cactus hands, the hands are opening 90 degrees and open the heart between your shoulders, reaching forward with that heart, okay? Inhale up. Exhale, cactus. Inhale up, exhale cactus. Do three more on your own. Last one. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, move the weight to your right leg and knee to chest with the left leg. Inhale, reach a little bit higher. Exhale, let's find eagle pose, crossing over the left leg over right, left hand forward, right hand above that. Couple variations in eagle. You can ground in that left foot so you're not balancing on one. You can stand by a wall. Or you can do a half bind where the foot isn't behind the shin. Make sure you really sit into that pose, lift the arms upward. Great shoulder stretch posture. Also really important to get that nice squeezing motion between the legs before we practice inversions. So remember the squeeze. Inhale, hands come up, unbind the legs. Exhale, hands to heart center, relax. Take a moment in Tadasana, mountain pose. Feet wide, hands open. Three deep breaths. Lowering your heartbeat, feeling grounded and stable.
Prepare for the next round. Closing the legs back together. Inhale, the hands come all the way up. Interlace the fingers again, pistol fingers, but check and remember which side you did first and do the opposite. Do what's a little more uncomfortable. Inhale, reach all the way up. Exhale, start to back bend, extending into your shoulders and your upper back. Using your breath as a tool to go deeper and deeper. And then we'll start bending each leg one at a time, coming up onto your tippy toes. A little bit more, you can do this. Keep extending those arms back. Don't give up on the arms just because we added legs. And slowly lower down, forward fold, exhale. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or jump, exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Let's take three deep breaths here in our home base. Ah, downward dog, so much fun. After you learned dolphin, downward dog is a piece of cake. <laughs> One more deep breath. And then we'll slowly walk forward or just lean forward, depending on your body length, to a plank, a high plank. Really activating our core here, which is really important in inversion practice. Lifting up into your body, make sure you're not collapsing with the hips or collapsing between the shoulders. Lifting against the ground, active core. From here, we'll go into a dynamic movement. Coming down to forearm plank and coming up to high plank. To do three starting on the same side, so Whatever side you started on, do another two more on that side. And then we'll go into the other side. Last one. And then hold the plank for another deep breath. And drop the knees. Take a child's pose. Give the arms a second to rest. Give your heartbeat a second to catch up with you. Let's take one more deep breath. And then we're slowly coming back up. Let's cross the legs underneath us. And take a moment in boat pose. In our boat pose, we're activating our core. Give your thighs a little hug towards your body. Feel super balanced on your sit bones. Make sure you don't roll into your lower back. Hands come forward, reaching the legs. Towards the legs. I lengthen your spine on every inhale, every exhale, connect your legs a little bit more towards your body and maybe straightening a little bit more. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. And then we'll cross right over left. Lift our whole body, if you can. Sliding in between your hands, all the way to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Didn't think we forgot about the left side, huh? Inhale, left leg up. 
Exhale, bring it all the way through your hands. Preparing for high lunge, feeling stable here. Inhale all the way up. Feel stable in your posture, knee above your ankle, tilted tailbone, strong back leg on your tippy toes. Going into those cactus breaths, we'll do five. Inhale up. Exhale, cactus. Open those fingers wide and that heart forward. Two. Three. Four. Last one. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, move the weight towards your left leg and lift the right leg up towards you. Inhale, find a little bit more length in your spine. Exhale, sit into your eagle pose. Right leg over left, right hand forward, left hand over right. On the hands. Lift those elbows away from your chest, getting that deep shoulder stretch. Sitting a little bit more deep into your eagle pose. One more deep breath. Inhale, reach all the way up, unbind the legs. Exhale, hands to heart center, rest. Take a moment into Dasana Mountain Pose. One more deep breath. And let's slowly come onto our backs. One last push of core work. One last back bend, and then we're on the wall, okay? So prepare yourselves for some push and work here, okay? Legs come up, let's go into some toe taps. I like to do an active exhale as I lift, either through the nose or the mouth, whatever works for you. Keep going. Little bit longer. And slowly release the legs back down to the ground, but keep them bent. Hands come by your ears. We're coming into full wheel pose. If full wheel pose isn't in your practice, you can try, or you can do bridge. But if you do bridge, go in deep, connect that chin to that chest if you're with me in wheel. Hands are by our head. Pressing into your feet, activating your legs already. Slowly lift up. Keep the knees hips distance. Make sure the knees and the toes don't splay outwards. They stay hips distance. Taking deep breaths, trying to sway your weight more into your hands, creating more opening in the shoulders, more arm extension, just like we've been working on the whole class. If you need to come out, you can come out and come back in. If you're okay, you're breathing deeply in your wheel. Swaying the weight forward and back. One more deep breath. And slowly come back down to the ground. Take a moment, hands on belly, or one hand on belly, one hand on heart. Just taking a second to regroup. Before we go in one more time. A couple of options, you can do bridge again. You can do wheel again, or if you're with me, we're gonna slowly move into forearm wheel for extra forearm strength and flexibility. What does that mean? From our wheel, you're just gonna slowly drop down one arm to the forearm. You can even bring your head to the ground to help you feel more balanced as you transition. 
I'll get into it first if you want to look and then you can get in. So your hands are by your head, pressing into your feet, lifting up into wheel, and if you're with me, slowly lowering down one forearm and the other. Forearm wheel. Again, you want your knees to be hips distance, feet are hips distance, don't open them wide. Trying your best. Even if it's too much, you can always come out. One more deep breath. And we'll all come out of our chosen variation. Again, hands to belly, but let's come into Supta Baddha Konasana, recline bound angle. Letting the knees open up, soles of the feet together, like so, like this. Hands on the belly or one hand on the heart, one on the hand on the belly, whatever feels more called to you. Taking a couple deep breaths here to regroup, to recharge before we go into our full pincha attempts. Let's take one more deep breath. And then slowly close the legs and move to the nearest wall. If you don't have a wall, you can use a bed or a couch, anything that will help you feel supported. If you want to place some pillows around you to feel extra supported and safe, you can do that as well. If you have a block you want to use between your arms to keep your arms from closing in, you can use that as well. Props are always your friend. So what are we going to start with when we're by the wall? We're going to start with supported, down dog, or a half fold. Has a couple names, but basically what we're just going to do is push against the wall, moving our hips back, and letting our chest fall slightly between our hands, more pushing in the arms. Every breath you take, maybe going a little bit deeper between the arms. Grounding in your feet, make sure your knees aren't locked, that there's still a little micro bend. They're still really active. Maybe eventually the chest will go totally through your arms. Feeling super open here. Let's take one more deep breath. And then slowly coming back up, let's come to wall puppy. Wall puppy, our hands are on the wall. Our chest is on the wall and our hands. And you're slowly gonna walk your feet back as you maintain this connection between your hands and your chest with the wall. Walking the feet back, maintain your chest on the wall. Try as much as possible to keep your hips over your feet still. A couple deep breaths here. Some last minute shoulder opening. And slowly release. Shake it out. Prepare yourself to get into pincha. What are we doing now? We're coming to the floor, okay? Couple options for hand variations. I like parallel arms. I know it's the hardest. If you're like me, you'll go straight into that parallel arm. If you're like, oh, that's a lot for me. I don't know, it's kind of hard. I don't feel stable with a flat hand on the ground. You can interlace your fingers or you can do namaste hands where the palms and the fingers are attached, and you're on the ground like this. Usually for beginning, that's more um, comfortable. So take whichever variation you want on the hands, but the elbows are beneath the shoulders and as wide as your shoulders. So make sure they're not opening out over here, they're not closing in over here, they're not all the way over here, they're right under your shoulders, getting that nice angle 
okay? When you're ready, you come by your wall, picking your arm variation. Try to be close to the wall so your back doesn't banana too much. In time, you can move further and further, but in the beginning, let's stay close to the wall. Coming up into your dolphin pose like we so love and did before. Looking in between your hands, lift one leg up and hop towards the wall. When you get to the wall, I want you to straighten one leg and keep one leg bent on the wall like this. From here, you'll just slowly start tapping. Tap, 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 tap. <clears throat> I'll go into the tap on the other leg as well, because we're a team, we're in this together. Changing legs. Bending the other leg, straightening the other leg. Tap, 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 tap. Make sure you're looking in between your hands. Maybe one tap will be so comfortable that you'll just find yourself floating for a moment. And that's the magic moment. That's what you want to feel. You're tapping and you're tapping and you're relying on the wall. And eventually one tap is just chef's kiss. So light, so gentle. And you'll just float off of the wall for a second and you'll be like, this is it. This is ecstasy. <sighs> okay? If you're enough with the tapping, you're like, I'm done with tapping. Let's try a couple more exercises. Let's go belly towards the wall. You're looking away from the wall. You're gonna move really close to the wall. You're gonna walk your feet up, almost to like hips height, and press into your feet to find this pike pose position, where you're in this L shape. You can walk the feet lower. You can walk the feet more forward, depending how far you need to get to the wall. Some people say you can Place your feet on the wall and this is the distance that you should be. So you can try that as well. Just try. This pike is obviously a very difficult position so you're gonna feel your back working very intensively here. But it's a great strength builder, okay? Shiny lower down, shiny lower down a little bit. Yeah. Go in a couple times, even if it's hard, just try and then lower down. We'll do one more drill facing away from the wall where we already are. And I want you to walk closer to the wall. So you're going to be here. Use your arms, use your muscles to come closer. So your knees are on the wall now. And then you'll bend your legs like so like this. If this isn't for you, you can try any of the other drills that we just did. If you're with me, you're just circling the leg around one at a time. Starting to feel comfortable in your arms. Beautiful. Take a rest when you need. Feel free to try any of the other drills we did already until now. If you need, take a child's pose. Let your arms take a breather. What we're gonna do now is get off the wall. Even if you're a beginner, don't be scared. Couple options, next to a bed, next to a big couch chair or a couch or pillows all around you. Whatever you need to do, find your variation. I'll show you what it's like next to the bed. It's really not scary. And imagine this with the couch too. Because it's elevated, your fall will be small. Okay? Like so, like this. The leg comes up, I'm just gonna fall so you can see. Make sure you're looking in between your hands, whatever hand variation you want. Falling over, oh, there's a bed. Okay, come back. 
This is why we practice the wheel before, so that your back is nice and warmed up to get into that fall, okay? And now imagine if you didn't have the bed and you did it in an open space, you would just fall into that wheel we did before, okay? So try with whatever variation you need. Couch this, if you're like, I'm not doing it in an open space, then you can do it against the wall still. There's no rules here. Whatever feels good to you. If you need a second to breathe and then pick whatever you want, you can do that as well. If you want, I can show you falling in the middle of a room. I promise it's not so scary. <sighs> Okay, we're falling and we're continuing. We're keeping that playful energy. Know that you'll be okay. Keep going, we're almost done. Don't get tired yet, soon you'll be done and you'll be like, wow, I want more. A couple more, a couple more tries. Come on, last two or three. Oh yeah, get that pinch of adrenaline. Okay, whoever's doing one more, do your last one. If not, we're on our backs. Ooh, yeah. Bring your knees to your chest. Some joint leg circles. Massaging the back. And change direction. Doing the knees separately, opening and closing. So proud of you guys. So proud of you. Change direction. Know that if you do these drills, you will see progress. I can tell you from my own experience, from just these couple of months of lockdown and quarantines that I didn't have my picture before and now I'm comfortable falling, I'm comfortable holding. I can hold for almost, I think 30 seconds now on a good day. Obviously after a strong class, you feel a bit tired, but knowing when you have that energy and you're like, I got this, you will get it. Let the knees fall towards the right, looking towards the left for a deeper climb twist. You can use that right hand to go deeper into the twist, or you can just open your hands shoulder width and just totally relax into your posture, whatever feels better for you. One more deep breath. Letting the knees fall to the other side, to the left. Looking towards the right. Again, you can use your left hand to help you go deeper into that twist. Or you can just open them up, shoulder with shoulder line. <laughs> shoulder height. Breathing deeply. Feeling all that circulation in your fingertips and in your arms from all the postures we did today, all the drills we did, from holding all those forearm stands or just trying. Every little win counts. So if you count your hold on the wall and today you can hold it for five seconds and then you give up, maybe tomorrow you can hold for 10 and the next day for 20 or however many times you keep track. It's really important to track your progress. 
Slowly come back to center. Give your legs a big old hug. Grabbing elbows around your knees for wind release pose and hugging your head towards your knees. Everything is squeezing inwards. And then we release for Shavasana. Just one last minute here to completely release, to melt into the ground beneath you. Allow your body to heal itself after our practice, after your day or your week. Breathing deeply through the nose, feeling your belly rise and fall, activating that diaphragm and releasing stress from the body. Make sure your shoulders are nice and far from your ears and totally relaxed on the ground. Take a couple more deep breaths. Filling up your body with new oxygen and releasing all the carbon dioxide and air in your body. Let you feel your belly kind of hit the ground beneath you at the end of that exhale. And keeping the eyes closed. Slowly using your hands and your legs to help you come up to a comfortable seat. Hopefully your hands are still working. <sighs> Any comfortable seat that feels called to you. Tall spine, open heart, shoulders back. Returning to your normal breath, feeling the circulation flow from your head to your feet again. Let's bring our hands to heart center. Thank you, namaste. So proud of you. I knew you could do it. Can't wait to see your journey from here forward. If you keep doing this practice or these drills, tag me, show me, share with me. And that's all. Bye. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you feel strong and ready to take on any challenge that comes your way. If you did enjoy it, please subscribe to my channel, comment down below, or give this video a nice little like. Thank you so much. Bye.